So in this lesson, we're talking about user agents. The user agent appears in the HTTP request header. And in general, this request is sent from the browser to web application. So the user agent variable is basically filled by the browser or the crawler. Different browsers and crawlers fill this field with different values. So crawlers often have a URL or an email address included with their user agent string. So the website owner can contact the operator of the crawler. The user agent string is one of the criteria by which web crawlers may be excluded from accessing certain parts of a website. For example, using robots text or more generally the robot exclusion standard. As with many of the other HTTP headers, information in the user agent string have not necessarily been unified. It contributes to the information that the client sends and its content can vary considerably, really depending on who is actually using and filling it. Let's assume that Google is visiting your website. So the user agent string for a crawler will contain something like Googlebot or it's a Google News crawler, then it will say something like um, Googlebot hyphen news. Google and other search engines have various types of crawlers. They mainly can be differentiated based on their capabilities. So for example, you can have Google's desktop crawler or their smartphone crawler. But you also have different crawlers for verticals, such as, for example, images or video or for Google News. If you want to simulate being Googlebot or any other bot for that matter, you can simply use a plugin called um, the user agent switcher and that goes into your Chrome browser or you use what's called the user agent overrider for Firefox. It allows you to set any given type of user agent string and to see if the website or the web offering in general kind of reacts based differently on the user agent string that will be provided with a request. Which then leads to another problem really. If you could set any given user agent string, you could basically claim to be Googlebot, but in reality you're not. So say when you need the capability to verify if the user agent and the respective request is real or fake, then for this purpose you can run what's called a reverse DNS lookup. And that's used on the accessing IP address from, for example, your log files, and you run it through the host command. Verify that the domain name, if you're trying to validate Googlebot in this case, either contains something like googlebot.com or google.com for that matter. Historically, um, user agent based delivery essentially means delivering something for one user agent, you know, for example, a crawler, and something else for another one, like, for example, your users. And that has been used in the context of what's called cloaking. So which is a clear violation of Google's quality guidelines. So really understand and make sure that what you deliver to Googlebot is the same as what you're actually delivering to your end users. From a more practical standpoint, whenever you do an audit, for example, it really makes sense to run a test and see if, for example, by accident, developers could have implemented something that is just available only to Googlebot, but not to the regular user. Again, that would validate the guidelines. I'd always recommend that you would run this simulation, especially if that's a website you're not 100% familiar with. So furthermore, what you can also do is serve different indexation directives for different user agents, such, for example, as Googlebot, where you would allow the site to be indexed. But also then, if you would be using Googlebot News, you might want that site to be put to no index to not serve it any further.